Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Best Podcast Ever, where three idiots you don't know talk about a hobby you've never heard of. However, as you'll notice, much like Valve, we can't count to three. Uh, but today, I have a different idiot with me. Kevin, Kevin, you're back. Yeah, I'm, I'm back. Back <laughs> from uh, the neutral, the phantom zone, sorry. The, the, the phantom zone, the neutral zone, whatever, whatever it is. We're glad to have you back. Uh, yes, dear listeners, we are still unable to have all three of us in the same place at the same time, even virtually, seems to be outside of our realm of expertise. Uh, Kevin, just for your own knowledge, there are BTEs placed over our face for this podcast, even though both of us can be seen online with completely uncensored faces. It, it just seemed on brand well, I mean, to keep I it that see way. You. Yeah. You're still covered in the face that like, I can't see you. I see me on the right. And then I see both of us with covered faces. So good start. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's one of those things where what you see and what the people see is slightly different. Uh, we're still just capturing through OBS. We still haven't found a way to make the uh, audio much, much better. And actually this is going to be a really quick episode uh, because of some technical difficulties. We weren't able to start recording when we wanted to and unfortunately i gotta be somewhere in roughly 20 minutes so we're just gonna go ahead and speed run uh what has happened to kevin during the bte hiatus uh so kevin you want to tell us a little bit about what you've been up to and where people find you now oh man uh i started a game review channel game bro do f1 stuff we do games mostly shooters Uh, i eat pizza i've been working on the trans am again that's totally torn apart in my uh, garage right now Stripped down to the frame almost. Uh, maybe even have it back together in a week or so, though. Who knows? What else? Um, well, you, World you, of Collecting Games. All, all kinds of stuff. Well, you did buy the BTE Mobile that I think we did show a picture of you and Ke- uh, you and Mike changing the tire that one night when I still owned it. Oh, yeah. The asshole who sees the nuts on the next day when you got it fixed. Uh, uh, yeah, he was a choice word for that. Using, he was using the German method of torquing, which is good and tight. As in break the 200 pound impact stick, yes. <laughs> hey man, I, I paid people to work on my cars. The, the most repair I ever did on that vehicle is I changed a rear light after I had to make a decision to hit my brother's car or to hit a tree. Because he was pulling into the driveway at the same time I was pulling out. So a decision had to be made. Just like that deer coming back from the challenge that one year. I we- remember Mike slamming the, fr- the floor. Yeah, the fake break. I was in control the whole time. I don't know what you guys were panicked about. I drove that car for over a decade at that point. So I was fully in control of my surroundings. No, it's been, it's been good. I think, uh, what did it need? It's needed some headlights because it keeps killing headlights for whatever reason. Uh, the exhaust keeps leaking because that flex pipe uh, didn't exist after a while. It, <laughs> that it might explain why, apart. why I was losing, like, because you're getting a solid, like, almost 50 miles more per tank than I was. Um, yeah, I've been trying to do some economy runs lately. I've gotten up to like, I haven't, you know, pushed out to the point where I think I've, I could probably hit 370 a tank if I'm just doing highway miles without traffic. Yeah, but I'm consistently around 340 or so. So that's pretty good for that. Uh, it sucks that gas is that expensive. I don't know. What's it? What's gas by you right now? Uh, like 350, 375 a liter. So it's like, what, uh, eight, 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 ish, eight ish <laughs> liters per gallon? So yeah. it's pretty pretty brutal, uh, and you have to remember I'm using uh, kangaroo dollars. I'm not using I'm using dollar dues. I'm not using freedom dollars. Uh, but the vehicle Ooh. I just purchased, the Honda ADV 150. Oh, what a what a vehicle that thing is! Uh, it has one cylinder, roughly the size of a shot glass. So I think I get like 80 ish kilometers per liter. So that thing can just run nice. forever. Yeah, no, I took it outside for the first time yesterday, actually. I had just been running around the basement, going up and down the ramps and stuff, because I'm in a multi, uh, multi-floor multi basement thing. And it has just been raining here in Sydney for just weeks and weeks and weeks. And today it's actually nice, too. So after lunch, I might take it out again and go to the beach. But yeah, my, my BTE mobile has been significantly downgraded. I bought a brand new vehicle I plan on keeping for the next, you know, 10, 15 years. For six grand That's Australian, right. just out the door. <laughs> That's right. I forgot about that. But uh, I don't know. Did you tell the story at all about the uh, the, the test drive of the motorcycle? Oh uh, no, I, did, I didn't tell the story about the test drive of the motorcycle with the fucked clutch. Uh, oh, so, that's that's why. Yeah, essentially, I, uh, I I was going to try and buy a BMW, whatever the baby one was, the one that they make in India, and 
I, I don't do manual transmissions normally. I, I've always had an automatic in cars. That's like the bog standard in America. So on Christmas Eve, because I'm such a smart guy, I was like, let me go out and test drive one of these little BMW things to see if I can handle it. And if I like it, let me buy it. Because uh, there was going to be a couple days where my girlfriend wasn't going to have off that I was going to have off. And my bright idea was to drive it those couple of days where uh, she was working and I wasn't to learn how to do motorcycle manual. So I get on this bike, I get out of the parking lot, and I get to where I need to turn onto the highway. And when I was in the parking lot, I was in neutral. So it doesn't matter if the clutch was engaged or not, I'm in neutral. I leave the parking lot, I'm in first. I go to uh, pull in the clutch and engine brake. And I pulled in the clutch and nothing happened. I just kept going. And, and so at that point, I had a decision to make, which was uh, go into an intersection or fall on a sidewalk. I feel like that should be the title card for this video. So I, I decided to hit a sidewalk and I had to pay the deductible on the bike. My argument was the clutch was fucked. That's why I crashed. And their argument was the clutch was fucked because you crashed. Uh, I have a cool story from 2008 uh, of something like one of those awkward decisions, if that's the case. Oh, all right. So like the one time I've ever hit anything, not a car, but like the one time I've ever, I guess, had an accident, if you will. It's like super late. I'm driving home. It's probably like two in the morning cold this is when i had the the white 91 firebird the one with the 355 and uh i'm driving home around this corner and i just punch it and kick it sideways it's and it's a, a blind corner and on the other side of that corner is a scion tc at three in the morning so my choice is to head on this scion tc or drive up someone's lawn and wipe out a mailbox <laughs> and well. the steering arm on the that came down from the box and ripped the bumper and the only thing i proceeded to fix on this car was the bumper and i left the steering arm the way it was it had the death wobble like you wouldn't believe but could still do 100 and whatever that gearing topped out at uh and i left it that way for a long time until i got rid of the car i literally drove it that way for a while other than that but yeah that was one of those decision making things where you're like hmm, do i cause a horrible accident this early in the morning and then like you know obviously when they find your car stuck on their lawn with the mailbox stuck underneath it it's like uh all that noise it made doing it too well my my main uh when we were in high school i won't say his name for obvious reasons but dude dude was just a lush more or less and an idiot and we were driving around he had a 1992 buick lesabre in metallic mint Ooh. green and we used to drive this thing like we were bringing it to the record tomorrow we used to just absolutely abuse this thing it was one of those cars where the inside of the windshield would frost over in the winter you don't have to tell me about that. Yeah, so we were driving, and he was making the assumption that all of the plastic bins that were left out on the side of the road were empty at this point. Uh, so he was clipping them just randomly, being, you know, a dumbass teenager. And he would clip one, it would be empty, it would make a funny noise, and then he would speed away. And he hit one, and it was absolutely to the brim. You know, don't know how they closed it, full of beer bottles. <laughs> So he clips the the bin and just a, a shower of beer bottles just explodes out like a cloud and then lands on this poor person's lawn. And then we just drive away because there's no way to pay. You, you heard every last bottle get destroyed. So the guy must have woken up to like a solid inch, inch and a half of just broken glass on his front yard. Nice. Yeah, there's no way you go own up to that one. No, no, not in that car. Uh, that car actually did survive Evan. We had to, um, you know, the like underneath the dash, like the thing that hides like the steering column and shit. Yeah. Yeah. That fell down. We had to duct tape it back. <laughs> oh, man. I don't think I've had a car that ever had one of those left. Yeah. No. Well, that's the thing. So is it fair to say that the rabbit, which I owned for like a solid 13 years before I sold it to you, is like the best car in the uh, in the Kevin in the Kevin stable uh, at the moment? Or in general? In general. I mean, have you had a more reliable car? Because I feel like all your cars kind of meet an unfortunate end from time to time. Well, the Millennia was actually a good car until it, the, what was, what got, what was the reason for that one? Oh, the, the coolant cr in the block, the, the passageways cracked. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that car, it would overheat all of a sudden. I'm like, oh shit. 
one of the water jackets broke. Uh, that was a good car. It's just the air conditioning was awesome, but whatever reason that car took forever to warm up. So getting heat sucked. And that was a car that needed premium, but it was this tiny little 2.5 liter V6 dual overhead cam motor, right? And you think premium, oh, that's a higher end. That was the car that was trying to go after, like, I guess BMW. It needed premium to make 140 horsepower out of a V6 in a luxury car. Yeah, I... The thing is, too, is like a lot of cars here, because they all have turbos to try and make them as efficient as possible, need premium. Like my girlfriend's VW Polo, which has like the world's most hilarious turbo, needs premium. And actually, my scooter needs premium, too. But when you only have to put two gallons in it, you know, it doesn't yeah, hurt that much. Yeah. So uh, to, to kind of bring it back to something else we, we touched on briefly, uh, you're currently doing this uh, this channel called The Game Bro, which... Me and Mike kind of went over this in the last episode. It seems like everything we do individually is infinitely more successful than anything we've done as BTE. BTE is an art project that we do to, like, vent. Meanwhile, our actual projects are infinitely more successful. Because I think you have, like, double the subscribers on Game Bro. Which is a shame, too. Which is a shame because the best effort really goes probably into this. But everything else is, like, low effort. You know, like, the Game Bro thing is, like, write a shitty script really quick. You know, play the game, capture the footage. That's not even of me playing it anymore because it's too hard to actually do that. But yeah, I, I did notice some, some, of the, some of the footage has, like, other people's watermarks on it. Yeah, there's no reason to, like waste time trying to actually play through the game myself when I could just copy it, watch it, take notes, play myself, write down how the controls are, what I think of it, boom, write it, you know, come up with an ending. That's pretty much the hardest part of the making a review is coming up with something to end on, start it, and then I just build it through my notes. That's really it. Yeah, the the ending gag with the, the BTE episodes for me have been particularly hard. I don't know how Mike managed to do that each week, kind of off the top of his head. I think it's just more his comedy style than what I'm used to and what I'm good at, you know? Yeah, I wouldn't want you guys to listen to what I say. <laughs> it's, it's one I of those... I actually th- don't want anyone to listen to it. Yet you put it online. <laughs> yep. And I did that pizza review. If, I don't know if you saw that. Like, that was a big, a big deal to me on a Saturday. Is, is that actually on GameBro, or is that somewhere else? No, I joined a guy who has his own channel that's pretty popular, and he just has seen where I've been so many times and all the... You know, he went to say he's like, you're pro- he's probably I'm more experienced than he is, to, to say the least, in the way of places and where I've gone. So we finally linked up on Saturday and we did a review in Staten Island. OK, at rustic pizza and pasta. So it was pretty cool. I mean, I feel like if you're going to do pizza review, you need to separate that from Game Bro. I was even surprised that your F1 thing was in the same channel as Game Bro, because Game Bro and, and we've said this on the podcast before, but I have no problem saying it to your face. You are not Game Bro. Game Bro is a character you play, <laughs> but it's one of those things where I mean, online extreme it's, version of me. Yeah, but it's it's one of those things we're trying to separate that online because everyone makes so many assumptions. You know, if they watch a couple videos, they're like, oh, this guy's doing this completely straight. You know, <laughs> there's no irony here at all. I have, like I said, it's it's hard to actually post that stuff and be like, oh, my God, I can't believe that's linked to me. Yeah, but I mean, like, that, I don't even want to listen back to it anymore. <laughs> I mean, you keep doing it, though, so there must be some part of it you still enjoy. Yeah, it's my I mean, like the jokes that I write in it are like, you know, that's my kind of humor. I just don't like hearing my voice say it, Mm. which is why I try to alter the if you've heard it. Obviously, you try to alter the voice a little bit to make it sound different each time and whatnot. I am pretty good at that. Yeah, no. And that's the thing, like on my other channel where I do the magic stuff, I'm not playing a character. I'm just playing me. But the thing is, like, I'm not writing jokes. I'm just responding to the game that I'm playing. And it's one of those things where the floor on the magic content stuff is a lot higher than the floor on, like, general oh, content absolutely. or gaming content. But the ceiling is much, much lower. You know, like, really? the, the, the top so. magic channels have, like, 200,000 subscribers and get, like, 24,000 views a video. And that's, like, the creme de la creme, like, the best of what's on offer with the magic stuff. And that's why I, I like mean, cracked the algorithm on how to make, you know, like if I, if I wanted to just throw shit out there to get um, views and shit yeah. like all that clout or whatever, like I know yeah. what to do to, to do that. But there's I don't have fun reviewing games that I really have no stake in. Like 
when I did the porn games for Atari, I'm like, holy shit, what? This did really good. I did it again. It did also pretty good. But the one thing I realized that, you know, like the shooter games that you review, these are all high dollar games I'm reviewing, you know, like no one's going to watch this as it drops every week. But the thing is, as you look back over the last year, of my videos, the residual views after the fact that people are searching for this stuff and then watching it later. So that's where my uh, views are coming from. Well, that, more or that's, less. that's the thing, too. I, you know, I've been friends with you for decades now. And I didn't know you were that big a shooter fan. Like, I knew you oh, did yeah. video games, but the the whole shooter aspect of it, you know, when Game Bro came out, I was expecting more general video games. I, I, I wasn't expecting the, the shoot 'em up category to be completely dominant in what you were reviewing. That's my bread and butter. I mean, I have games now that have, that, I mean, you've seen the market for some of them. There are, like, there's one I have that I, I thought I paid a lot for it, and it's in the thousands right now. Well, you know, when, a handful when, of them. well, yeah, no, because when I moved to Australia, I sold a lot of my vintage video game stuff. I kept some stuff thinking that I would eventually bring it over, but, you know, thanks to circumstances beyond my control, I haven't been able to get to the States much. So there's a lot of it that is going to get sold. Like, as much as I enjoy owning a Genesis copy of Musha and Truxton, you know, I think it just makes so much more sense to turn that into cash and to use it You're for other for things. What's up? This is within arm's reach. <laughs> that's the, that's uh, the um, PC yeah. engine version of Buxton that's worth an ass load. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I do have Musha, by the way. Yeah, no, the the TurboGrafx stuff and my Sega Saturn stuff sold for so much, even four years ago when I sold it. Oh, if you had Saturn now to sell, you would be rolling in it. Dude, I was buying Saturn games back in the day for like six bucks a pop. And yeah, I, I remember I, that story you used to go to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the video game store, Wilkesboro. For all I know, it might even still be there. But it is. I remember, uh, like, it, it was called Scud, the Disposable Assassin. I bought that game yes. for like six bucks because no one wanted it, and I played it like once or twice, and I was like, okay, that's that's okay, that's interesting. And I think that I remember that one selling for like one hundred and twenty dollars, and I went, really? <laughs> But the thing about version, I know Scud was like the lat when I picked it up, it was like twenty. I, I don't know what was about it, man, but it it sold for for quite a bit. And the other thing too is like all of this disc based stuff, I'm incredibly wary of because disc rot is a thing. Eventually, the oh, lamination yeah. on the disc just gives up. And Saturn I remember and GameCube are worse for that. Yeah, no, so that's why I'm glad I got rid of all my Saturn stuff when I did because it still worked a hundred percent. Like you know this stuff is fine versus like all this other junk that was disc based that I just, I literally sold all my Wii stuff, all of my PS2 stuff and all my 360 stuff as a lot. I was just, here's every game starting bid 99 cents, just fucking go for it. And I got, I got good money for all of it, but at the same time it was just, you know, near the end, it was trying to fire sale, all that stuff, you know, to fund my, my move to Australia, which it did. And now, you know, I'm a little bit more stable, hence me buying a six thousand dollar honda scooter for when i just can't be bothered to wait for the train i got a guy at work that's about to buy an electric uh scooter because you don't need a license for it and you know he's i think the one he was looking at was almost like six thousand yeah well the difference is mine's like so i i sat on a lot of um a lot of scooters and you know there's there's quite a few coming out of china taiwan a couple out of italy some out of france well although the french ones aren't made in france i think they're made in like taiwan and i got a vibe for it you know it wasn't bad but then I sat on the Honda and it was like sitting in a Civic and I was like, oh, oh, I guess I'm just buying this now because it didn't feel like wobbly. It didn't feel shitty. It didn't feel like, you know, a breeze would knock me over. It felt like somebody actually put thought into making it. <laughs> I've had the strong desire as like, you know, you know, I'm a big F1 guy, but, you know, I'm also in the MotoGP. I, I kind of want an old Ducati. Ducatis are weird yeah. because you can actually get Ducatis out here for relatively cheap. But again, I proved I just don't do clutches. So, you know, I'll have this little Honda for a while. And if I decide I need a second one, I'll just get like an old Suzuki Bergman. That's like a 600 cc, you know, scooter, which is insane. It's so silly. Yeah. But, you know, I don't don't mind being out there and being the Power Ranger. You know, it's something to do. It's fun. Like I, I've been want, looking at them, and I'm like, oh man, they would better sell me a coffin with it. But well, the first thing I would do, you know, you'd immediately like throw nitrous on it and just go, you know, fuck it, let's do it. Yeah, that's why I think everyone needs to start with a much slower thing. And I started with my electronic bike, so the e-bike that get, it still gets me to work these days when it's not raining. But you know, it's it it is one of those things. Unfortunately, we kind of have to uh, 
wrap at this point. This is going to be a very, very quick episode. So, yes, Kevin That's is back. One, you know, it was it was good because, again, like me and Mike's first episode was definitely, oh, hey, this is a thing again. And our second episode, oh, well, we actually talked about Slockar <laughs> stuff. Well, no, the second episode Ooh. is uh, is going to come out relatively soon. These are recorded far in advance because I obviously have another YouTube channel and I have a real job. So I do editing for BTE when the editing on my main channels, you know, good to go. Uh, so this will come out probably in about two weeks because the the Brian and Mike talk about limited slot cars episode will be coming out soon. And then this will be Since coming. The last time you heard from me, uh, I did win the third consecutive challenge. Yeah, and I also remember you saying after every challenge, it was the last challenge. <laughs> yeah, the, the plaques started stacking up. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I I gotta run, man. But yes, we are back. Uh, yes, we do see you guys down in the comments. Australian super van. I'm not saying your name because I don't know it. I'm not. I'm I'm just not saying your name because I haven't asked for permission to say it, and I don't want to be that guy. But yeah, thanks for uh, coming along. We will catch you on the next one. And yeah, guys, uh, we will see you soon. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And yeah, catch you on the flip side. Night, everyone.